So hi guys. In this video, we'll discuss the power series and their convergence. Let's start. So let's first recall what the power series is. So a series of real functions, which we denote by the summation of f sub n, is said to be a power series around x equals c if the function f sub n takes on the, the following form, which is the product of a sub n and the quantity x minus c raised to n. And then your a sub n and c are real numbers, and your n takes on the values of the natural numbers n0. So you can see here in the, the examples here at the bottom of the series are examples of power series. So in this first example, your n squared multiplied to n plus 2 all over n plus 5 multiplied to 3 raised to n is your a sub n. And then your c here for number 1 is equal to 0. For the second example, your 2 raised to n plus 3 raised to n all over n squared is your a sub n. And if you do some manipulation, you'll see here that your c is equal to negative 1 half. So in your previous lessons, the topic of focus when dealing with series is to determine the convergence or divergence of your series. So when dealing with power series, we'll also deal with that topic. However, we'll be asking a new question. And that question is, for what values of x will your power series converge? So the following theorem states that no matter what, you'll have one, exactly one of the following cases when dealing with the convergence of your power series. So either your series will converge for all values of x, so from negative infinity to positive infinity, or your series will converge only for zero, because if you replace your x here with zero, you'll get the zero series, and of course, that will converge to zero. Or, you will be able to find a positive number r such that the series converges for all x in the interval in either one of these intervals. So either a uh, negative r to r uh, open interval, or you'll have this interval here where you include the endpoint negative r, or you'll have this interval here where you include the endpoint r, or you'll have the closed interval. And then whatever uh, obtained interval you get, all the values that are outside of that interval, your power series will diverge for those following values. So just to note, we denote R to be the radius of convergence. So the next question is, okay, so how do you find this radius of convergence? So the following definition will help us uh, find that radius convergence. So your radius convergence uh, is defined to be the value one over rho where your row here is the limit of your co quote-unquote constant term a sub n, so your terms here in the sum that are independent of x raised to n, so it's the limit of the absolute value of that constant term raised to 1 over n as n approaches infinity. So just to be a little bit more specific, we take the value 0 for r, when the obtained limit for rho is positive infinity. And then we take the uh, r to be the value 1 over rho for when your rho is in between 0 to positive infinity. And then we take the value positive infinity for r when you obtain rho to be equal to 0. So this is one method in order to find the radius of convergence. There is, a, there is another method, so we can use this method here. So we take r to be the limit of the absolute value of a sub n all over the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 as n approaches infinity. So your a sub n here, of course, you just copy the terms here that are uh, independent of your x raised to n. And then your a sub n plus 1 all you have to do is replace the n's that you had in your a sub n with n plus 1. So you can use either of these methods. Uh, they should work no matter what. However, uh, when solving, of course, you want to find the most effective, effective and most efficient method. Uh, there's no set uh, standard for when you'll use one or the other. So it's just going to be up to your own discretion and to your own analysis of the problem to see which one is the more appropriate method. So now we have the radius convergence. So what does this radius convergence uh, 
how does this radius of convergence relate to when we have to find the values for which values of x for which our power series will converge. So with this radius of convergence, we can find the interval of convergence. So those are the values for where uh, values of x for which our power series will converge, so, which is what we were looking for. So this Cauchy Hadamard theorem states that when you're able to find this radius of convergence, your series will always be absolutely convergent for values of x for which your absolute value of x is less than r. And then it is divergent for all values of x for which your absolute value of x is greater than r. So that's how we'll be able to find our interval of convergence. However, it is important to take note that the cauchy hadamard theorem does not give a conclusion for when the absolute value of x is equal to r. So AKA, those are your endpoints. So indeed, for this case, anything can happen. So you can have problems where uh, your, for your interval of convergence, uh, you have one endpoint where your power series will converge, and then at the other endpoint, your power series will diverge. Or you can have the case where your, it will, your power series will diverge at both endpoints, or you will, can also have the case where uh, your power series will converge for both endpoints. So in order to determine if the endpoints are part of your interval of convergence, you will have to manually uh, input these values into your power series, and then using the tests of absolute convergence and non-absolute convergence that you guys learned from your previous lessons, you will uh, determine whether your power series will uh, converge at the following, at your endpoints for your interval of convergence. So applying everything that we learned, uh, let's solve for the following items. So we're asked to find, basically we're asked to solve for, to find the interval of convergence for the following items. So let's do the first item. So if you see here, we said, this was just, we showed this in the previous slide. We showed that our a sub n is equal to uh, this fraction here on the left. So that's what we're going to make our a sub n in. And of course, in order to find our interval of convergence, we first need to find the radius of convergence. But of course, before we can find the radius convergence, we first need to find rho. So we do that. So you see here that we take our rho to be the absolute value of a sub n raised to one over n. It should be the absolute value of a sub n raised to one over n. Your one over n should be outside of your absolute value. But because for values n greater than or equal to one, your a sub n here will always be positive. So you will, it's basically, you can actually just take this absolute va value out for this uh, specific uh, case. However, again, just to note, your one over n should be outside of your absolute value. So, uh, the, so uh, inputting this, applying everything that we know, we'll get this. And then separate solving separately for the uh, products that we have here in our summon, your n raised to 2 over n as n approaches infinity will approach 1. Your n plus 2 raised to n, 1 over n as n approaches infinity will approach 1. Your n plus 5 raised to 1 over n will approach 1. And your 3 will approach 3. Thus simplifying, you see that your row is equal to 1 third. Thus, our radius convergence will be 1 over 1 third or three. Thus, it follows that the series is the power series is convergent for values where your absolute value of x, since your x here is all by itself, less than three. Thus, your all values that are in the interval negative three to three. Now, our next step is to see if our power series converges at the endpoints. So, for values negative three and three. So let's first solve for when x is equal to three, you'll see that we'll get the following expression. You'll just simply just uh, substitute x with three. If you try to look for the limit of our sum in here, you'll see that this limit that we get is positive infinity. We know from the term test that when you're a series, your sum in as n approaches infinity, that does not approach zero. So if the limit is not equal to zero, then it's safe. It, we can 
uh, immediately conclude that our series would diverge. Thus, since we got a limit that's not equal to zero, we know that our series will diverge. Thus, our power series diverges when x is equal to three. Now let's solve for when x is equal to negative three. Uh, you'll get this. Uh, you know that we can separate negative three raised to n into the product of negative one raised to n and three raised to n. And then since you have a three raised to n here, a denominator that will cancel, you'll be left with this. So as an actual exercise, you should be able to see that your power series, your series here will not pass the alternating series test. So you, uh, you will have to use different, another test in order to determine the convergence or divergence of, the, uh, of your series, which is what, what we're going to do. So you can observe here that when your n is positive, so thus you see here that you have negative one raised to n, if your n is even, when your n is even, I apologize, when your n is even, you'll see that your negative one raised to n will always be equal to one. And then we showed in the previous slide that your n squared multiplied to n plus two over n plus five approaches infinity. So infinity multiplied to one, you'll see that as n approaches infinity, your sum in here will approach infinity when n is even. On the other hand, when your n is odd, you'll see here that your negative one raised to n will always be equal to negative one. Thus, negative one multiplied to infinity, you'll see that as n approaches infinity, your sum in will approach negative infinity. Therefore, your limit for this sum in will not exist because it will be positive, it will be positive and the negative and then positive and negative, so it will not go to a fixed point. Therefore, by the term test, we've shown that this series is divergent. Thus, our power series diverges when x is equal to negative three. Therefore, our power series converges for the uh, open interval negative three to three. Finally, let's solve for this example. So we said a while ago in the previous uh, while ago, because this was an example that we showed in the first slide, that our two raised to n plus three raised to n over n squared is our a sub n. So let's make it our b sub n. So of course we first need to find rho again. Uh, important note, your one over n here should be outside of your absolute value, but because for values n greater than or equal to one, your two raised to n plus three raised to n over n squared will always be positive. You can just, you can write this, it will still get the same value. But uh, again, important note, your one over n should be outside of your absolute value. Anyway, uh, you will have to do some manipulation here in your limit, because if you just uh, input your one over n here, you'll see that for your numerator, you'll have the quantity two raised to n plus three raised to n raised to one over n. And that's uh, quite a complicated uh, term in order to solve for the limit as n approaches infinity. So what you can do is uh, factor out three raised to n, and then you'll be left here with the two thirds raised to n plus one in your numerator. Thus, now you can uh, input your one over n, You'll see here that you're, you'll get the following expression here. As n approaches infinity, your two thirds will approach zero. So you'll be left here with one over one over n. As n approaches infinity, that will approach one. Your n raised to two over n will, as n approaches infinity, will also approach one. And your three will stay as it is. Thus simplifying, you'll see that your row is equal to three. Therefore, our radius convergence is one over three. Now, you, in this example here, your x is, with, is not by itself. It's not x raised to n. Here you have two x plus one raised to n. And of course, it's important to take note of that. Thus, you'll see here that our power series will converge for, for values of x when our, two, our absolute value of two x plus one is less than one third it's not the absolute value of x anymore because you have a different expression for your x here. Thus, uh, solving for these, uh, manipulating this inequality, you'll see that your x is within the interval negative two thirds to negative one third. Again, we need to, we can't just immediately assume that the negative two thirds and negative one third is a part, is part of, is part of uh, this interval of convergence. Thus, we need 
the next step is to manually solve for these. So let's first do a negative one third. You'll get this expression here. You should be able to get this expression here. If you do some manipulating, you'll see that your n for values n greater than or equal to one, your sum in here is less than two over n squared. We know that two over n squared is a convergent P series. Since our sum in here is less than the, this convergent P series, it will follow by comparison tests that your power series will converge for when x is equal to negative, negative one third. Finally, if we input negative two thirds, you should be able to get this for your series. You should, you should take note that if we take the absolute value of this summit here, you'll get the same series that we got in the previous slide, aka for when your x was equal to negative one third. And we showed by comparison test that this series here is convergent. That thus it follows that our series here is absolutely convergent and therefore convergent. Therefore, our power series will converge for when x is equal to negative two thirds. Therefore, our power series will converge for when x is, e is within the closed interval negative two thirds to negative one thirds. It's important to take note that there are several ways to solve for these uh, types of problems. But again, there's no set method for when to choose one or the other. It is uh, up to your discretion and your analysis to determine which method is the most effective. So this, so this concludes our discussion for power series and their convergence. Thanks, guys, for listening.